Curate St. Joseph Pastoral Region of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago welcomes you this morning to our online service. We feel tremendously blessed to have you worshipping with us. I am Rev. Annabelle Lala Rankadawan, the resident minister for the Pastoral Region. Joining me this morning in worship are members from the five congregations that make up the pastoral region, Jubilee Memorial, Lachu Memorial, Baracas, St. Joseph, and Cure Presbyterian Churches. We hope that as we lift our voice in songs of praise, pray for each other, read Holy Scripture, and listen to the word proclaimed, the Holy Spirit will fill our worship and ignite in us the desire to love and to serve you with all our being. to remember God's simple truth for us in all things may we love one another come let us worship God bow with me in our prayer of invocation O Lord and Saviour Draw near to us in this time of worship. Fill us with your spirit and lavish us with your grace and passion to do what you ask each of us to do. Help us to love each other and do no harm to each other. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All your words with joy surround you, earth and heaven reflect your rays. Stars and angels sing around you, center of unbroken praise. Fields and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, join to praise you joyfully. You are giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. God, Creator, Christ, our Savior, all are yours who live in love. Teach us how to love our neighbor, lift us to your joy above. Morning stars awake the chorus, mortals join with every part. Forward joy is set before us, as Christ's love joins heart to heart. Ever singing, march we onward, vectors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Amen. God Almighty, we honor you today through your Son, Jesus Christ, our hope and salvation. We approach your throne of grace unworthy, mere fragile human beings, humbled by your ever-present love, even in our sinful state. Merciful and loving Father, we need you, especially in these times of uncertainty. Lord, we confess that we have sinned by setting our hearts on fleeting things such as money, prestige, relationships, and neglected to honor our elders and love the so-called outcasts of society. We've even been judgmental at times, and the list goes on. Lord, we come before you with broken and contrite hearts, sorry for our sins and willing to turn from them. Have mercy upon us and cleanse us. Renew our minds and refresh our spirits. Loving Father, we humbly ask of you also to heal our land so that our nation may bring glory to your name. Lord, we thank you for a fresh anointing and the joy of your salvation, which can only come from you. And may we be doers of your word as we carry your message to a world in need. In Jesus' name, amen. This reading is taken from Psalms chapter 149, verses 1 to 9, entitled, A Hymn of Praise. Sing a new song to the Lord. Praise him in the assembly of his faithful people. Be glad, Israel, because of your creator. Rejoice, people of Zion, because of your king. Praise his name with dancing. Play drums and harps in praise of him. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. He honors the humble with victory. Let God's people rejoice in their triumph and sing joyfully all night long. Let them shout aloud as they praise God with their sharp swords in their hands to defeat the nations and to punish the peoples, to bind their kings in chains their leaders in chains of iron, to punish the nations as God has commanded. This is the victory of God's people. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. 
Scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Duties to one, one another. Be under obligation to no one. The only obligation you have is to love one another. Whoever does this has obeyed the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not commit murder, do not steal, do not desire what belongs to someone else, all these and any others besides are summed up in the one command, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you love others, you will never do them wrong. To love then is to obey the whole law. You must do this because you know that the time has come for you to wake up from your sleep. For the moment when you will be saved is closer now than it was when you first believed. The night is nearly over. Day is almost here. Let us stop doing the things that belong to the dark and let us take up weapons for fighting in the light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as people who live in the light of the day, no orgies or drunkenness, no immorality or indecency, no fighting or jealousy, but take up the weapons of the Lord Jesus Christ and stop paying attention to your sinful nature and satisfying its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. This scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. It's entitled, Reproving Another Who Sins. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to God for his word. Amen. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing love. The Father turns away His face As wounds which mar the Chosen One Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon the cross my sins upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying has brought me life I know that it is finished it is finished I will not boast in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but I will 
Ghost in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. His wounds will pay my ransom. As we prepare for the morning's message, let us join in our prayer of illumination. Let the same mind be in us, Father, which was in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we speak, let us speak the truth, and if we listen, let us listen with the will to understand and obey in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 8, the Apostle Paul says, O no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. O no one anything. Here Paul speaks of death and challenges us to be indebted to no one. In our time of credit cards and mortgages, Paul's command might seem ridiculous, but the real joke comes when he continues in verse 8 by saying, except to love one another. Verse 8 is not speaking of death, the way we might understand it today, but rather about the entire focus of our daily life. We are called, we are challenged and commanded to love one another. We have no choice. Verse 8 of Romans chapter 13 is not speaking of death the way we might understand it today, but rather about the entire focus of our daily living. We are called, challenged, and commanded to love one another. We have no choice. Immediately, you might say, that is silly. You can't command love. How do you make someone love someone else? One cannot command a person's emotions. We cannot tell a person how to feel about someone else. Well, you can, but you cannot force it. Paul here is not so much talking about feeling. He is more concerned about actions. In the theological dictionary of the New Testament, it is suggested that the Greek verb used here for love speaks about actions rather than feelings. The command here by Paul to love might be better translated to mean do loving things. Or we might use verse 10 to fully understand what Paul is saying. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love does not do 
anything wrong to a neighbor. If you think of the random acts of kindness, you are on the right track. To do something kind and loving for another person without expecting anything in return is the fulfillment of this command. And to do that according to Paul is to fulfill the law in its entirety. One may ask, why owe no one anything except to love one another? For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Does not appear on courthouse walls. Many persons seek to ensure that the Ten Commandments are proudly placed in their homes, proudly placed on school walls, and even on the walls of public buildings in the country. However, it seems strange that this verse of Paul is absent. Love each other. That would cover it. If we love each other, we wouldn't want to hurt each other. We would not want to cheat each other. We would not crave each other's possessions. We would honor and care for our parents, raise our voices for the needs of the vulnerable to be met. We would seek to ensure a meal for the hungry and clothes for the naked. And the decisions we make as individuals and as a society benefits all people. Maybe that is the problem. To us, the Ten Commandments seems to have a bluntness about them. But is that really so? The sixth commandment says, Thou shall not kill. It doesn't say, You will not kill or You will not murder. Notice the difference. There is a certain vagueness or ambiguity that leads us into conversations and on occasions out of hand arguments on basic details. On the other hand, if we were to measure all our laws and regulations against the simple standards of Romans chapter 13 verse 8, or no one anything except to love one another for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law and also verse 10 love does no wrong to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law we might find ourselves drawn into a rich conversation. When a murder trial is in progress, the words of the commandment, thou shalt not kill, has been used on both sides of the argument. The point of my sermon is not to take a stance on wrong or right or what is the wrong or the right decision in the case or what is the right and wrong of any individual involved in the decision making or even the victim or the one accused of the murder but it is simply to invite you to see it 
in the context how does it fit into the command to love how does a situation of a murder case fit into what paul is saying love one another is it straightforward verse 8 of romans chapter 13 oh no one anything except to love one another for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law it is very it is a very important verse it takes us out of our comfort zone that we might seek to create and remind us that life is messy and confusing and ambiguous and full of shades of gray no book no sermon no statement is ever going to change that no matter how much we might wish it to, to be so we are called we are invited and challenged to measure life in a curious way rather than looking for simple and blunt answers to complex issues we are told instead love each other or to put it another way the only debt we should owe anyone is to be Christ to them to seek to love love even when there are faults we are called to love each other no matter what that is all that is everything let us unite our hearts in prayer heavenly father as we come together in prayer we thank you lord we thank you for this digital service we know it is your hand lord that has made this possible you created the technology to enable us to worship in this time of physical separation separation from our families friends and loved ones they may reside in other homes other regions of trinidad and tobago or they may even reside in another country but you have made it so that we can still worship and listen to your word we thank you for the lesson which this unique time in history has taught us the lesson that you cannot be found in a building but in the message which you want us as disciples to spread you can be found in every charitable act every phone call made to someone lonely and in need during this time we pray for our families dear lord we pray that you keep them safe from any illness which may befall them keep them fed with not only physical nourishment but with spiritual sustenance we pray in this time of isolation that we come to understand each other better, respect each other more, and learn to love each other unconditionally. We pray for our nation of Trinidad and Tobago. We pray that during this time, you help us to remove the blinders which constrict us, to see that the bad things that are happening in the world are not specific to any one gender, any one race. It does not target the poor and spares the rich. It affects us all because we are all the same. We humbly ask that you help us to see each other for what we really are, all children of God. Let us learn not to judge or to look down on others. We pray instead that we will help and support one another, be there for one another, and to love one another. We ask this not only for our country but for the world. Please, Lord, not only protect us physically, but protect us mentally and emotionally during this difficult time. Let us not feel sad, but feel joyful for our blessings. Let us not feel lonely, but instead feel more love and connection with others. Let us not become more selfish, but become more selfless. We ask these mercies in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our offertory sentence this morning. For God so loved the world 
that he gave. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly beloved children. God has blessed us, and let us join in our offertory prayer. Gracious and giving God, we are grateful that you love us always, and you love us without conditions and reservations. We offer this morning these gifts that through our common mission and ministry, we may participate in acts that spread to others the love you have shared with us. Amen. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We all ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O Lord, your lessons as in our daily life. We struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people, for all not just for some, to love them as we find them, or as they may become. Let your acceptance change us, so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love. To practice your acceptance until we know by heart This table of forgiveness and laughter's healing art Lord, for today's encounters with all who are in need Who hunger for acceptance for righteousness and bread. We need your eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Renew us with your Spirit, Lord, free us, make us one. Protect you. 
May he go before you so that you will serve him in truth and reverence. Amen. Thank you.